In this video, we will take a look at algorithms. What is an algorithm? In simple terms, algorithm is a set of steps to complete a task or solve a problem. In computer terminology, algorithm is a set of unambiguous instructions for a computer to follow to perform a certain task or solve a problem. Remember, algorithm is not a computer program but the first step in the process of solving the given problem, which could be converted to a computer program that will run on computer. Computer programs are used to, created to implement the algorithms. Algorithms are used everywhere. Few examples are, washing machines use algorithms to decide how much water to use, what should be the water temperature, and how long to run the program depending on the wash cycle selected. Satellite navigators use algorithms to decide which route to take you to get from point A to point B depending on the distance, traffic conditions and any roadblocks. Computer games such as chess uses algorithms to generate next move based on previous move by the human player. Financial institutions use special proprietary algorithms for trading in shares and other financial instruments. Google and other search engines use algorithms to generate relevant search results. As you can see, algorithms are used everywhere. Now to explain what algorithms are, let's take a step back from computers and look at algorithms that we use in our daily life. Few examples of algorithms used by us humans are following the step-by-step -step instruction to build the flat pack furniture, or following the recipe in a recipe book to prepare a dish or the steps that we follow in the morning to get ready for school or work. Let's take an example. Let's say you want to make a pasta dish. Let's write an algorithm to make a pasta dish. The steps in the algorithm could be as follows. Gather the ingredients. Take a pan and add water and uncooked pasta to it. Now put it on the stove. Wait for the pasta to cook. Now take another pan and add ingredients to make pasta sauce. Put it on the stove. Wait for the sauce to cook. Once sauce is cooked, add cooked pasta to it. Your pasta dish is now ready. Serve it on a plate. We have written our first algorithm for humans. As you can see, this algorithm is simply a set of instructions to complete the task of making a pasta dish. If you follow these instructions in the order, then you will be able to produce a pasta dish. Now think about it. Is this the best and most efficient algorithm to make a pasta dish? Can you improve it? Since there are always more than one way to solve the problem, there could be more than one algorithm to achieve the same outcome. Let's see if we can improve this pasta dish algorithm. Let's write down the steps again. Gather the ingredients. Take a pan and add water and uncooked pasta to it. Put it on the stove. So far, the steps are the same as the previous algorithm, but let's make a small change. Now, while this pasta is cooking, take another pan and add ingredients to make pasta sauce. Put that on another burner on the stove. So now you have two things cooking simultaneously. Wait for the sauce to become ready and pasta to cook. If sauce is ready and pasta is cooked, add pasta to sauce. Your pasta dish is now ready. What do you think? Is our second algorithm better than the first one? Yes, it is. Both algorithms are solving the problem at hand, which is making a pasta dish. But in the second algorithm, we save time by cooking the pasta and cooking the sauce simultaneously. So it is more efficient than the first algorithm. So far, we have looked at algorithms that could be followed by humans. Now let's turn our attention to algorithms for computers. Let's write a simple algorithm to add two numbers, 10 and 20. Let's write down the steps for this algorithm. Set number one to 10. Set number two to 20. Add number one and number two. Output the result, which is the result of adding 10 and 20. We have written our first algorithm for computers. As you can see, this algorithm is nothing but a set of unambiguous instructions for a computer to follow to solve the problem of adding two numbers. 
Let's now write another algorithm to calculate difference in numbers. Let's say you have been given a pair of five numbers and you want to use the computer to find the difference for each pair. Let's assume you have been given the following pairs. Let's write down the steps for this algorithm. Input number one. Assuming we start at the first pair, which is 15 and 6, we will input 15 here. Input number 2. We will input 6 here. If number 1 is equal to or bigger than number 2, then subtract number 2 from number 1. Since 15 is bigger than 6, computer program implementing this algorithm will subtract 6 from 15 to get an answer 9. If number 2 is bigger than number 1, then subtract number 1 from number 2. Since 6 is smaller than 15, computer will do nothing here. Store the answer as number 3. The answer 9 is stored as number 3. Output number 3. Answer 9 stored as number 3 is output. Repeat the above steps for 4 times. Here we repeat all of the above steps four times so that we can get through the remaining four pairs and calculate the difference between the numbers in each pair. Again, our algorithm is nothing but a set of unambiguous instructions that when followed in the order will allow us to find the difference in two numbers for five pairs of numbers. Do you see anything that you might want to change in this algorithm to make it more efficient? Look at two steps shown with red arrows. Here we are comparing the numbers two times is it necessary? Let's see if we can improve this algorithm. Let's write down the steps again. Input number 1. We will input 15 here. Input number 2. We will input 6 here. If number 1 is equal to or bigger than number 2, then subtract number 2 from number 1. Otherwise, subtract number 1 from number 2. Since we are already checking if number 1 is equal to or bigger than number 2, we don't need to explicitly check the opposite condition. In our case, since 15 is bigger than 6, computer will subtract 6 from 15 to get an answer 9. Store the answer as number 3. The answer 9 is stored as number 3. Output number 3. Answer 9 stored in number 3 is output. Repeat above steps for four times to cover remaining four pairs. This algorithm is clearly more efficient than previous ones, as we avoid comparing numbers two and num comparing two numbers again. Let's now look at efficiency criteria for algorithms. Three criteria you should check to decide to decide if the algorithm is successful or not are: correctness or accuracy. Does it solve the problem? Consistency. Is it consistent in solving the problem? Successful algorithms will always produce the same results no matter how many times you run it. Efficiency. Does it solve the problem efficiently? The efficiency criteria has two requirements. Space required. How much memory is taken to complete the task? Since, since computers have finite amount of memory, this is a very important criteria. Time required. How much time is taken to complete the task? Efficient algorithms will take less time to run. Let's recap. Algorithm is a set of unambiguous instructions for a computer to follow to complete the task or solve the problem. An algorithm is not a computer program. Computer programs are used to implement algorithms. Three important qualities of successful algorithms are accuracy, consistency and efficiency. I hope you now have some idea about algorithms.